What's going on, you guys? It is The Talking Sasquatch. It's great to have you back. For those of you who have been watching my channel for a while, you'll notice a few months ago there was a big change in my backdrop. That's when the absolute legends over at Bamboo Lab sent me this guy. Now, as with most creators who have received printers from Bamboo, it was sent with almost no requirements whatsoever. I am not required to review it. I'm not required to make content with it. All they ask from me is to provide feedback. So everything coming from me, as far as Bamboo Lab goes, is my personal opinion just off of my experiences. But so far, those experiences have been absolutely phenomenal. That's why it seems almost everyone who's gotten one of these printers has been absolutely thrilled with it. I've spent the last couple months really getting a feel for how it works and diving super deep into the slicer. Now, I know there are a ton of review videos for this printer because I mean, anybody who gets one just wants to talk about it all day long. And there's plenty of videos on the slicer. However, I noticed there were a few gaps in what everybody's talking about. And some of that information is really hard to find. So today I'm gonna to just talk about some of my experiences with the X1 Carbon. However, I'm also gonna show you how to do some really cool things with the slicer. I could talk about this thing all day long, but let's get right into it. So the first thing that everyone notices when it comes to a bamboo printer is how fast it prints. Bamboo Lab printers can print up to 500 millimeters per second, and that is lightning fast. Now, you're not always going to be printing at that speed. However, that's what it can achieve. The important thing to remember is that when printing at normal speeds, it prints very fast and very, very high quality. My old Ender 3 Pro that I modified like crazy would print a Benchy in like two and a half hours. This thing can do it in about 30 minutes. Now, the printer does come with its own Benchy, but that's a pre-sliced file that's very heavily modified. I like to use the Bamboo Slicer Benchy as a more of a benchmark to compare things. What's also great about Bamboo Lab is that they've got a great store with a ton of replacement parts and they're priced very, very reasonably. Recently, one of my rolls of filament got a little bit waterlogged and got a bit brittle and got stuck in the extruder. I had to take the entire thing apart and honestly, it was super easy. And worst case scenario, if I had to replace the entire extruder, which I mean, it's got hardened steel gears inside there that actually hold the filament. This thing's sturdy. I can't imagine really breaking it, but if you did, it's only about $45. Also, replacing the nozzle is super simple. It's got two screws on it that pop off. All you have to do is unplug it. If you have the entire hot end assembly, you plug the new one in, screw it back down, and you're ready to go with your new nozzle. Now, the new A1 actually has a hot swappable nozzle setup, which is really freaking cool. I hope they bring it over to the X1. All they'd have to do is have like an upgraded uh, extruder assembly, and maybe they could make it possible. Now, if there's one thing I don't like about the X1C right out of the box, it's the build plate. This is the bamboo cool plate. So it prints at a very cool temperature. However, it does have one major issue in its adhesion. And that brings me to my least favorite part of 3D printing and it's glue sticks. I absolutely hate glue sticks. Now they were nice enough to send a glue stick, like this came right out of the box. And what you do is you add a thin layer of glue to the cool plate and that actually, it doesn't help with adhesion. It actually helps with getting things off the plate when it's done because they stick really well. Now, having super good adhesion on a build plate is fantastic because you can build things without brims and they'll print. They won't fall over, get knocked over. So you have a lot more successful prints. However, it's a pain. Furthermore, if you're not really careful with that glue, it'll actually make a surface on whatever you're printing. So when you break it off the build plate, you can see where that glue was and it's not pretty. Now, I know there are different ways of applying the glue, which make it a little bit better. For me personally, what I did was I'd lay a layer of glue down and then kind of spray it with water and then kind of get it to wipe over a really thin area so that you can barely see the glue and there's no lines from the glue stick. But still, I am doing all this work just to get my print to print. Honestly, if I'm going to spend time doing something, I want to spend it in the slicer or spend the time prototyping. So, yeah, messing around with bed adhesion is not fun. Furthermore, one of the first tools that they actually have on the machine itself is this scraper, which you can use to kind of scrape things off of the build plate. But the cool plate's a little bit soft. If you're not super careful, you can actually dig into it and cause surface imperfections, which, I mean, you'll see them on your print. To help with that, Bamboo actually ships you two uh, stickers. It kind of, you peel the other one off, you put the new one on so you can kind of refresh the build plate. It's actually a really cool feature that they have, and there are definitely some benefits to the cool plate, but having to mess around with glue is just 
a nightmare for me. Also to mention on the back of the build plate is their engineering plate. Now this is for higher temperatures. So you can print uh, PETG, ABS, TPU, uh, PA and PC with this guy, which is really nice to have that right out of the box. Now, I know the engineering plate isn't recommended for PLA. However, if you bring the temperature up to about 55, 60 Celsius, it'll print PLA just fine. So, you know, if that's all you got, you can still use it. So what's the upgrade? PEI. I absolutely love the PEI build plates, no glue necessary, and everything prints super well. So I have two PEI plates. This one here is a smooth high temperature PEI plate. Um, it's got a really nice smooth texture to it. You want to keep it clean. This one's gotten a little greasy. I'll clean this with a little bit of Windex and it'll clean right up and all those greasy spots will be away and it'll really help with adhesion. And then on the back of it is the engineering plate again. Honestly, if they ship the printer with this plate alone, I would be super happy right out of the box. However, the plate that makes me the most happy is this beautiful gold textured PEI plate. I love this build plate. It's the same on both sides, so if anything gets damaged, you've got two sides on it, which is really cool. With the textured PEI plate, not only does it give you a really cool surface, so right here you can kind of see uh, that texture on there translates to your prints, which makes them stick really well. What's also cool about it is as the plate cools down and the part cools down, it actually makes the part completely fall off. And as long as the entire printer is cool, there's almost no adhesion anymore. It's so nice to not have to break things off the build plate. Now, as you know, I do a lot of printing of cases and stuff for Flipper Zero parts. And in the beginning, I was having a lot of trouble getting really crisp text. Now, I've spent hours and hours in the slicer printing over and over and over again. And what's great about this printer is it prints so fast, you can just use trial and error. Hey, is this gonna work? Is this gonna look better? Let's knock one off. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And I mean, in a night, I can print five versions of something to really dial in those settings. So after a ton of trial and error, this is what I came out with. And this is on a textured PEI plate. It is absolutely crispy. Everything looks great. A Little bit of weird reflection from my lights. And also notice I've started messing around with colored infill. Nobody's doing that right now that I've seen and playing around with transparent filament has been a game changer. Now, Bamboo does not currently have any transparent PLA, but I've been buying it through Hatchbox. And I mean, their colors are great. It prints really, really well, prints really, really easily. And it's got a really nice transparent color to it. Actually, let me show you this. I've been playing with this. I printed this case probably 10 times now, but this is one of the final results of this. I am really pushing this printer to do as much as I can. So yeah, it's multicolor. We've got a slight backdrop or a drop shadow for all the letterings on the top and bottom. This purple on the bottom is actually a two color. It's um, black and purple kind of color shift. Looks super cool. The spiral on it, the spiral's not actually printed on the surface, that's backfill. That spiral's eight layers deep into the transparent PLA. So it doesn't like take away from the outside of the print. It makes it really easy for the spiral to print. Here's the back. I mean, it's just gorgeous. And I even put inside here, it's hard to see. Whoop, I'm upside down now. Um, it says AWOC Dynamics, and that's printed on the inside of it. This is, I mean, it's, it's super, super cool. I'm so proud of this one. It was actually AWOC from AWOC Dynamics that introduced me to this printing process or technique for that matter, because he made this before. I first saw this thing and I was in love with it. You can see that infill pattern. It's got the Hilbert curve about 50 or actually about 25, 30% infill. It looked so cool. And I was just like, I wonder what else we can do with this. So I messed around with every setting in the slicer. And what's great is you can just slice it, move through all the layers and kind of see what it looks like. So I'm gonna pull up the slicer and show you some stuff that you may have never seen before. So let's check that out. All right, so welcome to Bamboo Slicer. Uh, it's built off of Prusa's open source slicer. And I don't know, I really like it. I think it's fantastic. Uh, I've used a few other slicers before, but this one works really well for me. So the first thing we're gonna do is change the color because this is printing in gold right now and I don't wanna print in gold. It's gonna default to whatever's in slot one of the AMS anytime you bring in a new file. Now, one really low level thing to mention is when you change out a roll of filament on the AMS is it will actually populate over here. So right now I'm actually only running one roll of Bamboo Lab filament. Uh, that's what that little I there means. What's cool about it is if you're using Bamboo filament, it will A, automatically detect 
the type of material you're printing in and import the temperature settings for it. But it also gives you a cool gas gauge. So you can see right there, I've used, I don't know, 10%, 20%. But yeah, when it starts to get low, it'll give me a warning. It tells me I'm running out of filament, which is super nice. And the AMS can actually um, go through and change filament. If you have a backup roll or another roll, as soon as that runs out, it'll go right over to the new roll. So that's really cool. But one thing to notice is if we change this here, so I'm going to change this just to a slightly different color, confirm. When we go back over to prepare, it doesn't actually recognize that. You have to resync it. Just click the resync button, boom, and then your colors are there. So again, just a quick thing to notice. So the first thing I'm going to do, and there's two ways of doing this, right? So I can change the color by right clicking and going to change filament and changing the color there. Or I can switch over to objects and then individually change the color of any objects that I have. So go ahead and change filament. I'm going to change it to green. So for the sake of this demo, I'm just going to add some text to it. And this text is going to be printed on the first layer. So we're, I'm going to be working on it standing up, but we're going to flatten it out in a second. So the way that I do text is select the object, click the text box, just like everything. However, you'll notice I have all of my fonts, not just the ones that came with the slicer. It's really cool to have all these fonts. It literally unlocks so many options. Let me show you how to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to, but I'll post the folder down below. It's C users, your username, app data, local, Microsoft Windows and fonts. Awesome. Once we've done that, you can go through all these fonts, select all. And actually, let me just select this folder up here. And what you're going to want to do is right click and go to install for all users. When doing that, and I've already done this, so I'm going to hit no for everything, but that will make it so that Bamboo will import all of your fonts and yeah now you can use them in the slicer restart the slicer ready to go i'm not 100 percent positive how to do this in mac os hopefully down in the comments if somebody can tell us how to do that i'll pin it and we can share that information with everybody so now that we have all of those wonderful fonts we're going to go over here and type something on here so let's pick a, a font that's going to print well so some of these fonts print better than others like this is a really cool font and let's just do squatch because that's what i type on almost everything and I'm going to set the thickness on this to 0.2 because remember, I'm only printing this on the base layer. So this is going to be effectively one layer of text, which is the way I like it. And if we click right here, you can barely see it, but it actually added the text. I'm going to go ahead and change this, go to change film into black, and then we can kind of see what's going on. It's going to put this uh, purge tower right here and that's gonna get moved later on, so don't worry too much about that, because when we flatten it out, it's not gonna need all this. But if we look closely, we can see this font is not particularly great. It's gonna be hard to print, so let's go and find something that's gonna print a little better. Hey, this is a great font, I like that. And yeah, that should work just fine for our example. So there's two ways to change your font. You can change the font size right here. I can say 18 and do it that way. I can also scale it. So one of the things to keep in mind is scaling it this way is really useful, but if you use uniform scale, it's going to make it thicker. We don't want it to be thicker because you don't want it to print on multiple layers because the more layers that you have in multiple colors, the longer it takes to print. So we want to make sure no matter what we do, we keep this at point two. So now the important part, we're going to move it. So let's move it to where we want it to be. We can just use these arrows, make sure we don't have anything in any of the screw holes move it up and down that all looks pretty good but now we need to move it forwards and backwards so it prints flat now this is very important when you're printing this stuff we're going to use lay on face as a way of testing our thing so right now you see all these weird like transparent holes here that those are all faces according to the slicer and if i have too many faces like this it means it's not going to sit flat on the build plate which means it's not going to print well so we need this to be as big as possible to sit on a flat face and you'll see what i mean in just a second so we're going to go back over here to our text shape and we're going to move it the little green arrow is going to move it forwards and backwards on you know this axis so what we need to do is get it as close as physically possible to the same face as the green one. So I can actually change the numbers here. 55. Okay, cool. You see, it's kind of getting a little sketchy. Um, if I actually rotate. Yeah, see, it makes it look really weird. So let's make it not do that. 58. And that's going to probably make this absolutely perfect. So let's see what it looks like when we try to flip it on its face. So now we'll do the same thing as we did before. Select that and then... See how much bigger this got? So now it's going to probably print just fine. So we're going to drop it to its face. And then just to see what happens, we're going to slice it. So now we're in our slicer over on the right. You can see each and every layer as it's going to print. We can go to our base layer. There it is. Now you can see it printed perfectly. It's all on one layer. 
and you can go all the way up and print things like that. Super cool. Now, we can click this button here. It's going to show us just the layer that prints. Really cool thing there, too. I didn't even know it did that for the longest time. So really, really cool feature. So let's hop back over to prepare because there's one other thing I want to show you. And it's a feature that I love, but it's not implemented in a way that's super useful for me in its current stage. So really cool thing that we can do is if I get rid of the text, because it does not work if you have any previous painting or coloring on the print. If I delete that, go back to preview and slice it. What I can do from here, which is really cool, is on the side, and I'll do this, there we go. We scroll down to one of these layers, and this is where I learned how to do the uh, infill stuff. If I right click here, I can change the filament right there. So I'll do that. So layer four is going to be black, and then we'll make layer five go right back to the other filament color. Slice it again, and now we'll see that, yeah, just this one layer is going to print in our black, which is so, so cool. So when we're using transparent filament, that means you're going to see these lines inside here. So if we go back to prepare again, we can go back to global, which is going to give us all of our options, change strength and go down to my sparse infill. If we change this, let's go to octogram spirals, a really cool one, and then slice it again. You can see you start getting these really cool patterns out of it, which make things look really, really cool. Now, I am a perfectionist and little things annoy me. So these extra lines that don't really seem to work with it. Those are annoying to me and we can get rid of them. So if we go through our settings, I can show you how to do that. So the secret sauce for the clean infill is actually going to internal bridge support thickness, bringing this from 0.8 to 0.2. In doing that, slice again and bam, look at how much better this looks, so much cleaner. So if we switch over to something like pretty much anything, this is what I use for the Marauder case I just printed, it looks so good this way. Now the problem is when we go back and we add text to it, it's gonna get rid of that layer change. So we're gonna have to do it manually and I'll show you how to do that now. Okay, so go back here and let me stand this up on its upright face. So we're gonna do the same thing we did before, but we're gonna select that face, there we go. That is right side up and we're going to add text back. Cool. I just hit the uh, back button. So up here you have the undo button. You can press that as many times as you want. And um, I think it caches a few or a certain number of backs, but yeah, you can revert pretty far. So we're going to sit this back down on its face. We're going to slice it again. Make sure everything looks like what we want it to. So cool, cool, cool. That looks like a good layer. Let's make sure that. All right, cool. That's going to print well. So perfect. And let's go back to prepare because what we're going to have to do is put a stripe through it manually. So here's a bit of fun guess and check work that you'll have to do. So let's go to here, go to painting, select our color, which is going to be black. And we're going to do a height range. So we're going to set that point two is pretty good. So this is just going to put a stripe in here and we can pick a location for it. Um, I want it to be pretty close to the base layer. So we'll set around there and just go to preview. You might have to do this a few times to get it to print on the right layer that you want. Let's see if we get lucky. Let's go down here and let's see what this looks like. All right, cool. So what I did is I was able to actually get it to print only on the, the first layer of infill prints, and then it goes right back. So there's only one layer of color change. Now, this is a little bit dense of an infill. It's gonna be distracting. So what I'm gonna go is go back to global and let's change our infill des density down to like 8%. Slice plate, there we go. That's a little bit less distracting. So that looks super cool. So now we've got our text and we've got our stripe. Super, super cool. Now, one thing to also look at when we go to our base layer here, scroll in, we can see that we've got some gaps in this text. Well, we can actually make that look a lot better. So if we pop over to the quality settings, there we go. We can change our first layer line width. So we're gonna switch this right here from 0.5 just down to 0.35 and let's see what that does go ahead and slice it again this is why i love this slicer look at how much nicer this looks that looks fantastic so that's what we're gonna do now another thing to note while you're printing text like this is it's a lot easier to print the black part of the text first and then the green because you end up with some of these small shapes, especially with smaller text. You really wanna get that first color, like the font down first. I found that works a lot better. And it took me forever to figure this one out. It's a really simple setting that nobody knows about. So if we pop back over to prepare and scroll back, you'll notice the things that nobody ever pays attention to 
which are all of these icons over here. Super good to have. Well, this icon right here opens up settings. So, hello, there we go. We can change the plate type, we can change the print sequence, and we can change the first layer filament sequence. If we go to customize, we can pick the order it's gonna pick all of our colors. So I want black to print first. Hello, there we go. Then we're gonna go with green since we're not gonna use gold or our purple here, uh, it won't matter. But now I know exactly what layer it's gonna print and what color it's gonna print first. We go back to slice plate, go down to our first layer, we can use this slider and actually watch it print. It's really fun to watch, but yeah, look at that. So we see we start off with our black. So cool, it starts off with an outline. This is gonna print really well and really reliably. I know I'm not gonna have problems with this. Such a great feature, and again, it's it was really hard to find that information. Another cool thing that I found was, if we go back over to prepare, is this flushing volumes button right here. So this is a multiplier, this is at 1.0. So basically it is figuring out how much material to flush for multicolor pictures or multicolor prints for that matter. I've found that 0.4 really does a pretty good job. Now it gives me some warnings, but uh, I've tested this on black and white prints and 0.4 seems to be pretty good. It's gonna cut down the amount of uh, like wasted filament substantially. So play around with your own settings, but I found 0.4 to be very, very solid. So. If you want to try that definitely do that now another thing we can do is i will bring in the rest of this so what did we do here do do bottom cool we'll bring in the rest of this print give it a second because it's a step file um let's place it on its face so we have it placed placed face down i don't know why it's so hard to say I'm going to auto arrange there we go and it's going to arrange them on the plates but what's important here i'm going to change the color to green so it doesn't have a huge prime tower I can go and change my other, go to other options over here, and I can change the print sequence to by object. So now what it's gonna try to do is print both of these objects on the same plate one at a time. Unfortunately, right now it's too big, so I don't have enough space on the print plate. So let me grab another print and show you how this works. So I'm gonna pull in some parts from a dancing skeleton that I printed before, and it's gonna ask me load these as a single object with multiple parts. Let me show you what that does. So if I load it as a single object with multiple parts, it's gonna load this as a single object. I can only move it as a single object. So right now, obviously that's an issue because there's collisions, these parts are touching each other. In this certain situation, I don't wanna do that. So I can do two things about it. First of all, you can see it's mad at me. I can just right click on that and go to split into objects that should split things into objects and then at least I can separate them that way. So now if I want to print them all at the same time, let's see if I can arrange them and with any luck, I should be able to print these objects individually. Okay, let's see there and there. So what this is going to do is and I can throw it in the slicer actually and you can see exactly what it's going to do. Hit slice. Give it a second, there we go. And if I look how it's printing, it's gonna print one item and then the other, which is really useful because a lot of times you'll have situations where basically what'll happen is sometimes you have adhesion issues, sometimes it's really better to just print one part at a time so it can print one item, then move on to the next item instead of printing one layer at a time. So obviously if we go back, right? Uh, click global here, go back, change it back to print sequence by layer, slice it again, it's gonna take a second. There we go. And you see right now, it's just gonna slice it by layer. I like printing by object in a lot of cases if I'm printing multiple things. I just think it works better and it's a little bit more reliable in my opinion. Now here's another really cool thing. So you'll notice I've got this item which has got four objects. Can I break those apart? Extremity set? I can, so I can split these even further into objects. So now I have different objects here. Um, it makes some trash on the bottom. I can clean that up and delete some extra parts here. But What's cool about this, if I break them up into objects and then I start printing them and this thing falls off, inside the printer itself and in the mobile app, it has the option to exclude individual objects from the print. So say this arm breaks off, I can just tell it to exclude this arm and it will stop trying to print that arm and it will save the entire print. Where that is really handy is say I want to print a bunch of these heads, right? So let's delete these for the moment. I don't need any of these. Get out of here. And then, actually, I can just delete all these, right? There we go. So now I've got a head. What if I want a bunch of heads? I can just right-click on that and say, fill bed with copies. 
boom, look at all these heads I got, shebang. Well, if one of these starts to fail, it's gonna kill the entire print. It's gonna take forever. And if this is a multicolor print, this is a big deal. Also, what's really cool is if I'm printing something like cases that have a lot of really you know detailed text on it, um, if one of them doesn't come out perfect, I can just bail on that one and print the rest of them. The thing about multicolor prints is that what most of the time you spend doing is changing filaments. So if you know, half the time of your print or three quarters of the time of your print is just changing filaments, you know, and you have to restart it, it makes way more sense to print a whole bunch of things that have the same filament changes at the same time. So they'll print almost exactly the same amount of time. I mean, a little bit longer, obviously, for more printing, but most of the time on multicolor prints, you're spending all your time with flushing. So printing a bunch of things is a great idea. And if there's a first layer defect on one of the objects, just being able to bail on it is absolutely fantastic. I'm gonna pop back over into this print because this is the one where I uh, I showed you earlier. And I can kind of show you one other thing that I learned how to do. I was able to get an STL for the Marauder logo. So that's the logo that I actually put on that. And I'm going to use this in order to imprint that on the back of this case. So all I have to do is lay this flat. And then I can move it on top of that. And it's weird. I work in the upside down orientation like 90% of the time here. It's kind of funny. There we go. So now we can still see it. We can resize it this way. There we go. We'll click resize. Make it the size that we want to. And then 0.2 millimeters for thickness. And then, oh, I see what it's doing. Undo. I got you. Sometimes I forget about what I'm actually doing here and which parameters I'm in. There we go. 0.2, it's gonna make this layer thickness 0.2. That's what I was doing wrong. Now we can just go ahead and move this guy back over here. And again, click the arrow onto here. Let's give it a slice and see what it looks like. All righty, that looks good so far. And cool, that will print. Now notice I've got some gaps on stuff. We can fix that as well. Because you'll notice that, yeah, there's some green in between these lines here. If we zoom in, it doesn't look very good. So all we have to do to fix that, if we go back to prepare, select both of those items and go to assemble. In the uh, in the process of assembling them, it's going to make them print absolutely flawlessly. Look at how much better that looks. This is going to print and look fantastic. There are so many cool things you can do with Bamboo Slicer. Again, I've spent hours and hours messing around with this, and I'm sure people watching this are going to be like, oh, you could do this, oh, you can do that. So if you have any tips for me, please leave them down in the comments. I would love to know your tips. So yeah, that's a brief run through of my experience with the Bamboo X1 Carbon. Honestly, it's such a great printing experience. It's it brings 3D printing to the masses. Now, yes, the X1 Carbon runs uh, 1449 US, which is on the more expensive side, but it's worth every penny and you can get the lower price models and get pretty much all the same feature. They released the new A1 series printer with an AMS for $459 and again, getting the multicolor AMS is kind of a, a must get in my opinion. Bamboo Lab really wanted to take the entire 3D printing industry by storm and they really, really did. They're also great with the community. They're very receptive. Anytime I've asked questions and stuff, they've been fantastic. And they even sent someone like me, who's a very new creator, a printer, just to get feedback from. Again, I'm not trying to make this entire video just about gushing about Bamboo, but honestly, they've been completely fantastic the entire process. So obviously, if you're looking for a new printer, I would highly recommend checking out any of the Bamboo series. They're fantastic, and for the money, they just really are hard to beat. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this one. It's a little bit different than my typical stuff, but I thought I had some stuff to offer as far as different techniques and different ideas and things that I found were really hard to find as far as information on how the slicer works that I thought it was valuable to share with you guys. But as always, thank you so much. We'll catch you next time.